Welcome back. Today I thought we'd talk a little bit about work holding. We'll see if we can cover some of the main topics. If you're interested in kind of getting into CNC machining or maybe you're new. Heck, maybe you're experienced and you just are bored and want to watch some CNC related content. Who knows? This is a CNC machinist vise and unlike a lot of the other vices that you may or may not have seen that are similar in nature to this, you see this one's surface ground here on the edge. So this can be tilted up on, up on its end and that makes it relatively unique. I don't know if you also see that I've got these dovetail jaws uh, installed on this and far and away, this is my favorite setup. If I can use this setup here, this is the setup that I choose to use more often than not. If I can get away with having these little marks in the jaws after the first operation, because you can always put it down on parallels later if you need to, but if you can get away with having marks in the part from these jaws, man, this is my favorite setup. It just, it's fast, it's easy. You gotta be careful. You can't put too much torque on this because especially when you're clamping on steel. I cut far and away, I cut way more steel than I do aluminum. I enjoy cutting aluminum when I can, when I'm building fixtures, but more often than not, we're cutting steel here. We're either roughing mold components or you know, sometimes we're finishing mold components depending on the tolerance. This vise, I'm, I'm a huge fan of. The Tagara brand in general, uh, this, is a, this is an in-house brand from Shars, and I gotta give a shout out to Shars here. I know, I know and I've talked to different people that have told me that through the years, Shars has been known for super low and inexpensive uh, imported equipment. But I will tell you that they carry a tremendous amount of equipment that's made here in the United States. My Mitsubishi ASX 445 shell mill arbor, the, the, this came, the, the arbor itself came from our tool, but the shell mill and the inserts all came from Shars. I have been using these for years and years. These Tagara uh, ADS, they're Apple David Sam ADS collet chuck holders for high clearance, they work really well. So. A lot of the Tagara stuff, from what I understand, is made in Taiwan. And just for a, a quick, uh, just a little quick FYI, the tool steel that we get comes primarily from Taiwan. I was asking our vendor here in California. I try to buy local as much as I can, so I was curious if our tool steel that we had been buying for all of our tooling was made here in America, and they said no. Apparently, Taiwan has one of the uh, highest tech, you know, high tech tool steel you know, forging plants in, in the world, or, or the newest plant is there in Taiwan. So, a eh, little, little FYI, but anyways, this is a very common way for me to hold work. There are a lot of things you need to take into consideration. How much of your work is gonna be captured? If you are gonna clamp something the way that we have this clamped, you definitely would prefer to do it right there in the center. But if you can't, let's just say you did have to do it out here. You definitely don't wanna to torque on your vise this way without putting something in here. It's not that it can't be done. It's just that it's a bad practice. You want to keep pressure even across the jaws so that you don't get any, you know, you don't, you don't want this, the movable jaw being kind of torqued, just, just not good in general. There are so many different ways to hold things. I've really come to learn that I'm going to use the word work holding, but really it's fixturing is really what separates masters from you know, average everyday jobs. It's, it's really the difference between taking a job and making it uh, profitable or very profitable. I guess in some cases, maybe it maybe it's the difference between making a job profitable or, or losing money. But I can tell you that when you build good fixtures through, you know, creating solid, uh, reliable, rigid work holding, it allows you to remove material faster. It allows you to hold tighter tolerances and just overall, create a better part for a better cost in a shorter time frame, where it, which is the name of the game. So huge fan of this vise here. Let me show you a couple of the other vices that I have. This one is actually made by a company called M. You know what? I'm going to set this right here on the edge. I don't normally do this, but I'm going to do it this time. And then we're going to run this thing back a little bit so I don't have to lean in quite so far. So this is a vise from M-Lock, and there's other brands that are similar to this, like Chick Work Holding, but rather than having a crank or a lead screw like this, this one allows you allows these wedges. You tighten this screw down and it anchors this, and then when you tighten this one down, it pushes the jaw forward. And you can see that the guys at M-Lock -Lock actually offer their own serrated jaw. So this is, this is super awesome. Very, very common, low profile. You can see it's not only is it lower if you have Z travel issues, but it's a little bit narrower so that you could fit more of them into the work envelope. 
Very cool vise. I don't use it that much only because for the most part, I try to use a six inch vise. Stepping down from something like a large vise like this, we'll just step down a couple of ways. Here's another vise that I got from MLock. This is one of their five axis vices. And this is something that you probably aren't likely to see very much on a little three axis mill. Now on something like this X7, this thing could be really useful. You could stagger this thing this way. You could run, you could literally probably run four of these inside the work envelope and that would be quite effective. More often than not, these self-centering vices are used in five axis work holding applications. They're really good for operation one. Many times when you torque them down, they're not nearly as repeatable as something like, like this because of this, this big rigid fixed jaw allows this to be really repeatable, especially if you're hanging on to a good bit of the part and you're using a torque wrench so that you're always applying the same amount of force. But that being said, if you, if you want to have maximum work holding density and you need to use a vise, something like this is really useful. The first one I ever bought was actually this little guy from it was actually this little guy that I got from Fifth Axis Work Holding. This went on the TRT-160 in my uh, VF2 SSYT, and it worked great. It still works great. You can see it's got some chips on it because we actually had this uh, on a little fourth axis rotary in the shop here just recently. We pulled it off, and this one has reversible jaws as well, and so you can have a little bit bigger grip. I guess we'll move down one more size, and this is something that I don't use a whole heck of a lot really at all. This is a super inexpensive. In fact, this actually came with an old inexpensive CNC router that I got years ago. This is a little uh, tool maker's vice. There's a variety of names for these things. There's a, they have a lot of unique applications. It's not particularly super, this one is not particularly super accurate, but there have been times uh, that I've actually had to hold something. If you look carefully, there's grooves in this movable face and there's a relief in the fixed face. The idea is that if you buy a quality vise like this, that everything is ground, square, and parallel. And there have been a few times when I've actually had to pull a stunt like this because I didn't have the equipment to, uh, I had a bar that I needed to drill. And obviously I couldn't stick it up because I didn't have the Z-axis travel here. So I was able to, to pull a shenanigan like this, clamp, it, clamp the bar down, put it in here, then use an indicator to run it down to make sure that it's as straight as I was gonna be able to get it. So it was uh, not the best solution, but it did work. So I guess that's about it for now for vices. The next pieces of fixturing that I think I'd, sh I'd show you or that I have used a fair bit are chucks. Now, it's not uncommon to see uh, chucks like this one. Actually, this is, I have a five inch buck chuck that's actually on our Tormach lathe, but this is a little six inch Six jaw chuck that I bought for the Tormach lathe from, from actually from Shars. I don't know if you guys can see. This is a face mount, which means the bolts go through the face. And so you can, and we have made our own custom T nuts so that we could mount this thing into the machine like this if we needed to. But it's actually way more common when you see guys using chucks in mills like this. It's way more common to see them on some type of a fixture plate. So they would, you know, they would make a custom, this is a plate that I made years and years ago for the X5. But you'd make a plate, you'd bolt it down, and then you'd bolt a chuck to the plate. That's a far more, more common way to do it. One thing that I didn't mention that I'm, I'm noticing now that I think it's really important that I mention is, if you look right here at this handle, this is something I should have mentioned when we were talking about these vices. The length of the vise is really, really critical and the way you mount it is really critical. If you go too far back towards the Z-axis way cover, we'll go ahead and move this, this one back. If you were to hang this vise off this machine just a little bit further, you can see that there's barely any room, you know, a finger's length, and that's maximum travel. If you were to hang this vise off the table just a little bit, it would be very easy to injure your Z-axis way cover. And you can see that this handle sticking off. I'm gonna turn this around and then we're gonna jog it the other way after I close the door.
you'll see now that as we approach the door, it's actually quite close. Right there. It's close, it's a tight fit. It goes, but again, just about a finger. I have a bunch of other vices. I actually have a Kurt DX6 right here that does not have jaws on it, but I have this other Tagara that I got a long time ago. This is, uh, this thing's a boat anchor, but I'm gonna slide this up here just for comparison. I thought I was gonna be able to use this vise on this machine, but lo and behold, you'll see here shortly that once we got this thing installed this way, if we wanted to use the T-nuts in the ears, see this one's not machined flat, so you can't flip it up on its side. But even now, watch. It, it barely, well, is it gonna skim by yet? No, it's, it's making contact, just, just barely. These, a lot of these newer vices, including my Kurt vise, which I'm not gonna snag off the shelf because it's the, basically, the Kurt DX6 and this are very, very, very similar. I think this one's about 100, 150 bucks cheaper. But they have holes right here so that you can run a screw th down into this T-slot. But you see, if I were to have mount, if I would mount this through here, you'd see that we'd for sure have collision issues on the back side of the machine. And so I wanted to use this. I used this in the VF2. I used it in the 1100MX. But for whatever reason, it just wasn't the right vice. And so that's why I invested the money in the uh, 660U. And to be honest with you, I couldn't be happier that I did. Get this out of here without bumping into the camera. Guess I'm taking the air hose with me. Or not. All right, so maybe you don't want to use a vise. Couldn't blame me if you didn't want to use a vise or if you had an application that wouldn't allow for a vise. Maybe you need an angle plate. Maybe you need to bolt your angle plate down and clamp something to your plate to work on it. It's happened before, I'm sure it'll happen again. There are little V-blocks so that if you need to do something round, you can do that. There are so many different ways to hold on to pieces of material. I, I, lit, I literally could talk about it forever. A standard 246 block with a stud that goes through it, a 123 block. They make 123 blocks that don't actually have holes in them, which are pretty useful. If you take into consideration all the stuff that we've already talked about, the vices, the chucks, all this stuff. For the most part, what you really end up with is something, something very similar. You're, you're gonna have to hold everything down. So whether you're propping things up, holding on to pieces of round stock, generally speaking, you're gonna end up with some type of a toe clamp holding onto your part. Your toe clamps can sit they can either key in directly to the stand like this, or you can pull one of these, set it up and, and do something like this. And then of course you can adjust the height basically infinitely. And then you have different length studs that go into your, that go into the T-nut down in the rail. There's a couple of uh, pieces of the puzzle that I haven't shown you yet. And I'll show, I'll show you these last couple and then we'll call it good for today. Machinist jacks are super important. You can buy them, you can make them, but they are tremendously useful. I'm actually heading over to the EDM to snag this one off of here. So I'm gonna show you th this machinist jack that I have, and then I'm gonna show you what, I've always called them horseshoe clamps, but I know that they're also known as finger clamps. And then we'll call it good for the day. It isn't uncommon for me to have something sticking out of one of these vices, like really far. So we'll just simulate that real quick. We'll get all this crap out of the way. And we'll just simulate that with this 246 block. Let's just say hypothetically that we had this 246 block. I don't know, 
just say it was sticking out. I probably didn't grab the right vice riser. But let's just say you had something sticking out and it was going, you know, it was it was hanging out quite far and it was just flopping in the wind. This isn't the right one, but you can take your your machinist jack and you can slide it under there. Once it makes contact, you can just kind of give it a gentle twist. If you're really doing precision work, it's not a bad idea to take a dial indicator, stick it on, mag magnet it down to the bed, and then put it on the top of your work, and make sure that you don't put too much force. Because believe it or not, if you're working on something that's thin, like you know, an inch or less, and it's aluminum, it's not really all that difficult to put a little torque on this and start deflecting the material. And if you're, you know, if you're trying to work down, I would say anything under a thousandth of an inch, that'd be point, uh, you know, point zero two millimeters. Uh, it's you know you got to be you got to got to watch yourself a little bit you know it's it's easy to to release to release stress from from you know steel and uh, and just you know kind of tweak the workpiece inside the work holding so I wanted to make this video this I guess I didn't explain these but you can drill a hole into the side of a block like this and then and then run all your clamping through or you can just go ahead and put this thing right down on top just like this and do the exact same thing. There, there are probably an infinite number of ways to hold on to, well, just about anything. I didn't even show you guys any of the 5C collet stuff that I've had to use. I guess before I cut you guys loose, I've had a few different people ask me to do some longer form content and it's tough because I'm not really the best at scripting video content and most of the time when I'm actually making my videos, I'm just so busy doing it that I don't really take the time to slow down. These have been one of my favorite tools for holding relatively low profile work to the table. They're made by Mighty Byte. You just bolt this thing down and then this is an eccentric screw in here. I, don't know, I guess I really can't show you guys but as it kind of rotates around and it orbits, it presses in and it's pretty slick. And it has the a side with teeth and a side that's nice and smooth so it won't mar your part. The only thing that's tricky with these is that you kind of have to pick a spot on the table within the slot. You know, there's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. And, and it can be a little tricky. These things can actually get kind of tweaked and kind of twisted a little bit. Okay, last but not least is just this collet holder. This is just a little 5C collet holder, and you can see that it's got this little uh, this little threaded nut with this little arm on the back of it. And you can unthread this. I'll just unthread it and push this collet out real quick so you guys can see. I've got a I've got a couple of these. This is just an El Cheapo off of uh, off of Amazon. And it's just a collet block that holds a variety of different round things. So if you need to hold something very concentric or or of a uh, of a I guess a standardized style diameter. This will allow you to do that, and you can put it into, you can put it into the vise. You can clamp it down to the table. You can do really whatever you need to do with it. But holding on to whatever it is you're cutting, I think there are two things that are really, that really separate the kind of the really skilled master machinists. And just for the record, I don't know that I would put myself in that category. I think I'm pretty good at the things I need to be good at, and there's just so much that uh, I'm sure I'll never know. But when I watch guys, I think I'm skilled enough to recognize someone that is uh, significantly more skilled than I am. And there's no question that two things really separate really, really good machinists or tool and die makers. Their ability to fix your things creatively, effectively, and sometimes quickly, and more than anything, their ability to plan their job before they take their first cut. They know exactly how they're going to hold the part, how they're going to fixture the part, what they're going to build, how they're going to do it. They've kind of got this puzzle solved in its entirety before they even begin programming their first toolpath. They can look at a part and know exactly what they need to do to make that part you know, quickly, effectively, and uh, hopefully if they're in a job shop, profitably. So that's it, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I, I really do enjoy making content, and it's important to me that we have some fun. Hopefully you guys learn something. Every time I post a video, inevitably, 
somebody posts something in the comments that I learn, I learn from. And so if you see something in here that you would like to contribute to, by all means, share it down in the comments. If we see something that's awesome or we have links to other videos or whatever, I have no problem sharing that stuff. This is really all about the journey for me. Uh, I'm, I'm thankful to all those that have shared their knowledge with me throughout the years through YouTube. And uh, as I head down this path, I'm trying to do the same with you guys. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys learned a little something on this. And we will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.